Today is Thursday of the ninth week of Ordinary Time. Again, we celebrated Pentecost on Sunday, and now we enter and pick up back where we left off before our Lenten season began on Ash Wednesday. Today's gospel comes again from the 12th chapter of St. Mark, beginning at verse 28 and going through verse 34. We get a little question and answer session with Jesus. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other but he and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So one of these scribes comes up to Christ. He hears him speaking about uh, the teaching of the gospel, about uh, marriage, about love, and also about service uh, to the neighbor. And so one of them hearing this comes up to Christ and has this question uh, for him to see about the greatest commandment. Now, Christ quotes the Old Testament. This is called the the Shema Israel prayer. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one. Uh, and the Lord God is, uh, is Lord. You shall love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. But then he adds on to that. He said the second, so the second greatest commandment is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, most traditionally in in Christian art, when you see Moses coming down from Mount Sinai, uh, when you see uh, any depiction of Moses holding the tablets, normally he's holding two tablets, right? They look like almost like tombstones, but he's holding two tablets. And most traditionally, that you would have on those tablets representing the Ten Commandments, on tablet one, you would have Roman numerals one, two, and three. And then on the second one, you would have the rest of them, four through ten. Because it was already understood that the first three had to do with the love of God, and the next seven had to do with the love of neighbor, right? So you have, uh, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me, uh, keep the uh, Lord's day holy, right? and do not, uh, do not commit adultery. Then we move on to four, on your mother and father. Five, you shall not kill, you should not commit adultery, you should not covet your neighbor, right? And so this has to do with, with, our, with our neighbor. And so he's answering, saying, the greatest is love the Lord your God. The second one is love of neighbor. And this is already part of the Jewish tradition. The, the response of the scribe is interesting. He says, you're right, teacher. Right? He doesn't yet know who Christ is. Right? He doesn't call him the son of God. He doesn't say, he doesn't call him the Messiah or the Christ. He calls him a teacher. So he's not quite there on who Christ is. Now, Christ actually adds something to the quotation from the Old Testament from the Shema prayer when he says your understanding or your thoughts, right? And so uh, a greater thing. But so he quotes, the scribe quotes the Old Testament as Christ did, but Christ added thoughts in there that to keep these commandments is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. What does this mean? We have to understand a little bit about Jewish ritual sacrifice. There are some sacrifices that you partake in, and there's other sacrifices you don't partake in. To partake sort of the the Passover uh, sacrifice is that you would uh, roast the lamb, right, and you would consume it. So you you partook of part of the flesh. But there were other sacrifices that were whole burnt offerings, usually for the forgiveness of sins. There were whole burnt offerings where the whole animal carcass is burned up in sacrifice. What he says here is that if you keep this, these two commandments, right, the, the first commandment uh, to love the Lord your God, and he is one, and then to love your neighbor as yourself, if you keep those, that offering of your life is something that's greater than the sacrifices, right? So this is, this is huge, is that it's the faith in action. Now, this is how Christ responds to him. He says, you are not far from the kingdom of God. 
he's meeting the scribe where he's at. And the scribe doesn't understand, as I said, his, his, his identity as the son of God, as the Messiah, as the Christos, the anointed one. He says, you're not far from the kingdom of God. Right? You recognize that the faith must be lived authentically. And if you do this, then you will come to know, this is the subtext here, you will come to know who I am and who you are united to me. Again, one of my favorite quotations from the Second Vatican Council was that Christ came to man to reveal man fully to himself. That if we don't have a relationship with Christ and we don't have an authentic living out of our faith, then we're not really who we were created to be. But as we come into union with Christ, then we see our lives as he sees them. He reveals ourselves fully to, to us. And so when we struggle at all with temptation or with sinful tendencies, of looking at and saying, Lord, this is that struggle to withhold nothing from you, to give you all, all my actions, all of my thoughts, all of my words, because that's what you require of me. And if I put that effort in, Lord, I trust that you will give me the grace to respond and perfect this good work that you have begun within me.